first spotlight presentation from politics to venture capital, how to spark lasting change. Please welcome Michael Tubbs, former mayor Stockton, California and founder Tubbs Ventures. One thing about Forbes under 30 or being young and successful is that no one ever teaches you how to lose. So much of the attention, so much of being successful is in the highs. And today I want to spend a little bit of time talking about how to use rejection as a redirection. So five, six years ago, 2016, I was elected mayor of Stockton, California at 26 years old the youngest mayor ever of a major American city, a city of 315,000 people. While mayor, we did the first guaranteed income program in this country. We had two documentaries, and it looked like winning and winning and winning was always going to be the path. And then in 2020, the, at the time, unthinkable happened. I lost, very publicly. I woke up November 7th with articles like the one behind me saying, the fall of Michael Tubbs, the death of Michael Tubbs, and then that moment I had to really think about how do you use rejection as a redirection? At the time for introspection and the time to really get serious about what is it that I wanted to do. Surely the path to politics wasn't because I liked chicken dinners or 10 hour city council meetings or being yelled at for things I had no control over. So in that loss and in that trauma of losing, I really discovered I was really fascinated by this idea of how do we equalize the opportunity structure in this country. Because I know you all read the news and make the news, and it's very clear to everyone that our country, our society, and our economic system, capitalism, is at a crossroads. And I've always been inspired by the Good Samaritan parable, the story of a man who was left on the side of the road, and some people walked over him, some people walked over him, until finally a Good Samaritan saw him and helped him. And I originally got into politics thinking that the Good Samaritan impulse was the key to making lasting change. But recently I took a tour of the Jericho Road where the story takes place, and I found out that actually this road is structured for violence. Meaning this outcome, this person on the side of the road, no Good Samaritan would be able to fix because the road was structured for that outcome. Because it's a narrow road conducive for ambushing. And in many respects, our society is structured for the outcomes we complain about, for the outcomes we, you guys are young, so you guys are next door, but older people like your parents next door about, the outcomes that people are upset about, but they're literally by design. So at first, I thought politics was the only way to change the structure of society and change this road, but I recognize now that part of it also has to do with capital, because it's no, politics alone can't explain why black families only have 13 cents per the dollar of every white family. Politics and policy alone can't explain why Latino founders only get 2% of venture dollars, or black founders 1%, or women founders less than 10%. So in the midst of losing, I was able to clarify my purpose and started Tubbs Ventures, a venture fund focused on proving the thesis that talent and intellect are truly universal, but resources opportunities are not. I know for those of us in this room, we think about sort of society, we think about the world as we can be, and I want to challenge everyone to understand it's not just the politicians, it's not just the elected officials, but each and every one of us have a role to play in changing the structure of our society and creating the society, the country, the world we truly deserve to live in. And it's been such a great opportunity the past year to meet amazing founders, many of whom that look like people in this room, but many of whom look even more like the city of Detroit, where we are or even more so like the wider society in the world, brilliant founders doing things like helping public defenders access information to, to prepare for, for their poorer clients, helping neurodivergent people connect on, app, on apps, helping renters build credit, and proving that politics alone is not the only way to, to create the society we deserve. So as I conclude, 10 years ago, I was on the Freedom Rides with some of the original Freedom Riders. And one guy, Bob Singleton, he told me that he was arrested on August 4th, 1961. And then he said, Michael, why was that day important? And I was like, well, you were arrested. You, you did something to change the structure of this country. I'm deeply grateful. And then he looked at me like I'm looking at you, and he said, no, son. On that day, Barack Obama was born. 
And then he said he had no idea that the choice he made as he would have been Forbes on the 30th if it was around then, he was like 21, as a 21-year-old to get on the bus and desegregate this country would pave the way so a child born with no opportunity would have the chance to be president. And then he said, what are you prepared to do today so that 50 years from now, a child has more opportunity than you had? And, and family, that's the question before us today. That's really, I would argue, the thesis of this conference. It's to have fun, it's to network, it's to connect, but it's also to help us think deeply about what are we going to do as entrepreneurs, as creators, as investors, as artists, as, as educators, as, as human beings, what are we prepared to do today so that 50 years from now, the world looks different, more inclusive, more just than it looks today? What are we prepared to do so that 50 years from now, we're not having the same conversations about trying to save the planet from climate disasters? We're not having the same conversations about wealth and income disparities. We're not having the same conversations about racism and white supremacy. What are we prepared to do today with our access, with our privilege, regardless of whether we're winning or losing, to create the society that we all deserve? Thank you.